Hello, oh, welcome to the another video of Cricket Thrills. Gordon Greeney smashed a last day double hundred to win a Lord's Test match in 1984. Let's watch the killer inning of Gordon Greeney score 240 not out of 242 balls with the help of 29 fours and two sixes. West Indies won the match by nine wickets. Four runs. First runs on the board for the West Indies. Shot from Gordon Greenwich. Short and it's four runs. Legs. Long chase around for Bob Willis. Just can't make it. We need to do them uh, principally in boundaries here. Four, square drive. Just whizzing past Graham Fowler at that point. Hit the fence now. <laughs> A matter of four, two seconds from leaving the bat to striking the small fence. And the extra applause now for Gordon Greenwich reaching 50 out of a total of 77. It's a great shot. Had some really good shots this morning, Gordon Greenwich. Foster to Greenwich. Beautiful shot. Put through mid wicket for yet another boundary. So strong here around his leg stump, and that was the area that Foster fed him. The full swing of the bat there. And then to Greenwich. So the 100 up, a little clip through the onside by Greenwich. Sees West Indies on to 100 for one. That's come up at exactly uh, four runs an hour. New over from uh, Neil Foster. Early John 61. And it's through mid off for four runs. Well, Green is getting a four and be over now. Hit that slightly on the up, wasn't quite at half volley length. That's a great effort. And now I'm responsible for that first run out. Desperate dive there. Colleagues have come out. Made the applause when he uh, makes another single. Willis to bowl to him. It's through this time. Yes, the quick single for Gordon Grange. Up goes the back, up go the arms. Super 100 this. Really has played exceptionally well. 100 out of 149 for one. Has really set West Indies on their way. The 
Willis, good shot. Good punch down the leg side from Bob Willis. And these two men, Greenwich and Gomes, taking full advantage of anything at all loose. I'm not too sure, but uh, dare one say it, that he seemed to have his hands on his knees as that ball was actually coming towards him. Mind you, that is Ian Botham's normal stance there. He, he does stand, so just relax with his hands on his legs. Beautiful shot. Great stroke cut by Greenwich. Hoisted away, that's over square leg and into the crowd. Six runs to Greenwich. 139 he goes to now. Both of them the bowler to suffer. Not to went into the grandstand with no apparent effort at all. So uh, Peter May needing his glasses to believe this. That'll be 150. Desperate dive by Gatting out there, all to no avail. Another boundary for Gordon Greenwich. Up goes the bat. 153 now. Brilliant performance from the Western Guinea. He's got all his uh, supporters with him, and they've enjoyed every minute of this great innings. 1 6, 22 fours in his 150. And Western has brought the difference down now to only 93. That's cut finer still. Willis does the field in, but they take two more. Another bowling change brings uh, Pringle back into the attack. Bowling to Greenwich on 158. And immediately greeted him with yet another boundary. Fine shot from Greenwich. There's the old Bajan seashell. I've uh, blown a few of those in my time. It's gone again. Four more. An encore from our friend. Three hundred comes up for the West Indies. Bad luck for Foster. But a good fortune for Greenwich, but he hasn't needed much today with uh, some of the stroke plays he's produced. This is one of his few false scoring shots. Perilously close to leg stump. I don't think that anybody can fault David Gower for making an over-generous declaration, but um, two things really have combined to take the match away from him. Um, they're both interrelated. One is the great innings, and the other is the fairly ordinary performance by his attack. Well, you can't blame anyone for... Uh setting a target of 342 in less than a day. And a new partnership record for the West Indies. 250 they've put on now, Gomes and Greenwich, beating the former record held by Lawrence Rowe and Alvin Kalicharan of Bridgetown, 1973-74. Well, that's an extraordinary stroke. 
was just as he played it, he had the feeling that he hadn't quite middled it. In fact, he did, and he's hit it for six and gone past the 200 mark to become only the ninth cricketer in the history of the game to make a double century at Lord's. <laughs> The 1980s are remembered as the era in which West Indies swept all before them, and certainly as far as matches against England were concerned they did of the 24 tests the two sides played in that decade. West Indies won 17 and the remainder were drawn. But going on to the 1984 series in England, there was a flicker of optimism in the home camp given that they had lost the previous two series in 1980 and 1980-81 by relatively slimmer margins, one and two tests respectively. But that summer was to be the first of the two back-to-back 5-0 black washes, and the outcome of the second test at Lords in particularly a brutal second innings double century by Gordon Greenish knocked all the fight out of the England side. The first test of the series was done and dusted in four days. West Indies bowling England out for 191 and 235 as they won the match by an inning than 80 runs. West Indies bowling England out for 191 and 235 as they won by an inning and 180 runs. The second test was far more even, England managing to take a slim 41 runs first innings lead after being put in by the Clive Light with Ian Botham finished with 8 for 103. The first of only three occasions he took a 5 for against West Indies. The second round, England extended that lead past 300 runs thanks to 110 run from Alan Lamb and 81 from Ian Botham. On the fourth day evening, with an hour's play remaining, England were on top when Lamb on 109 at that time and Derek Pringle were offered the light by umpires and they took it. The crowd made clear their frustration while the press were almost unanimous in their condemnation of the decisions. At that time, West Indies were clearly flagging and their fastball Barry, the consensus was that England should have stayed out and made some runs, even if the sun was not shining. From as early as the middle of the afternoon, Clive Lloyd had been on the back foot with only one slip in the place and allowing the over rate to slip lower and lower. By taking the light, England had surrendered an initiative which came rarely against West Indies at that time, and it also meant David Gower, the England captain had to declare slightly earlier than he wanted to the next day. On the Tuesday, the fifth and final day, both Alan Lamb and Derek Pringle fell quickly and Gower soon closed the inning, setting West Indies a very stiff target of 342 from 78 hours. They needed a run a minute but the pitch was as good as at any stage. Of the match and the condition, cool and sunny without a hint of swing, were in the batsman favor. Despite that, few believe that the likely outcome was anything other than draw. There was also a matter of England's attack. Bob Willis and Ian Botham had bowled long spells in the first innings. Neil Foster was out of form and Derek Pringle injured a thumb in dropping Larry Gomes in the second over after lunch. Meaning that David Gower options were further reduced. The spinner Jeff Miller was hardly a match winner with a record of 60 wicket in his previous 33 test. West Indies opened with Greenwich and Desmond Haynes. They played out two maidens and then started to unleash some shots. At the start, they thought, let's play it as we see it. Gordon looked confident from the first over. Greenwich said there was no strategy of attacking the ballers. We never planned to go after it. It just happened. Gordon Greenwich was often the case was limping out, but it did not inhabit his stock play. I played with a chronic back injury for most of my career, and I also perspired heavily when batting, which often gave me a, a stiff neck. The pair had put on 50 57 in 15 overs when Desmond Haynes pushed the ball towards their leg and called for a single. Greenwich sent him back and Lamb scored a direct hit with an underarm throw to run him out. I sat inside the dressing room for a while feeling down, Haynes said. Then I began to watch again and saw some truly amazing shots, so I figured well, at least that makes up for my failure. At lunch, West Indies were 82 for 1 of 20 overs. Soon after the resumption, Pringle put down Gomes at full slip then the flood stage opened.
plant. Between lunch and tea, Greenwich and Gomes added 132 in just 25 hours. Greenwich in particular cutting and driving with confidence. We got a chance to increase the tempo and we did that, Greenwich said. You don't plan it. I can't think anyone is going to plan 340 runs in 5 hours, regardless of who you are playing against. David Gower continued to attack well into the afternoon with two slips and a gully. Gordon Greenwich brought up his 100 of 135 deliveries soon after Botham dropped him at first slip of Willis but then by the writing was on the wall, especially as the next two men in were with Richards and Clavelight. Gordon Greenwich admitted he was given more freedom by knocking. There were good enough players to come who could bat out a draw. The bowling side reduced their over rate to try to stem the flow, but that too was too little too late. After tea, the bowling was savage. Ian Botham's first three overs of the evening session went for 29, including a lofted six by Gordon Greenwich over square leg. By the time the last 20 overs came around, West Indies only needed 43. Gordon Greenwich brought up his 200 of 233 balls with a hook over the fine leg boundary, while Larry Gomes also accelerated towards the finish. Wisden wrote the Gordon Greenwich innings that it was Greenwich day, the inning of his life, and his ruthless batting probably made the bowling look worse than it was. With just two runs required, Botham switched to off spin and Gomes scored the winning runs of the first ball, triggering a pitch invasion by a crowd who had initially come to Lords in the hope of seeing an England victory. West Indies had caught the runs with 11.5 overs to spare. While such run chases are more commonplace these days, at that time they were rare. Today, teams sometimes score 400 in a day, Greenwich said, but over 300 to win on the last day is less than a day was unheard of back then. Gordon Greenwich finished unbeaten on 214, made of 242 balls and including 29 fours and two sixes. Larry Gomes was left on 92 of 140 deliveries and he hit 13 fours. The pair added an unbeaten 287 for the second wicket. Gordon Greenwich passed the ball about lots like a gifted artist pouring out his soul onto canvas using every color in his collection of foils. Larry Gomes' roles is often overlooked but not by Greenwich. He was quite explosive in that innings as well. A lot of you don't look at the very Larry played, the role he played, the sort of mention that I get for what I did. Larry played an exceptional innings too. When we discussed the matter about him getting his 100, it wasn't matter to him at all. He said, let's get the game over with that. That was a brilliant history was to be created that day and we had done so. West Indies went on to win the series 5-0. No one thought about a black wash in advance. I can assure you of that, Haynes said. The mistake the England authorities made repeatedly during the 80s was to try to leave the wickets flat to nullify the threat of our fast bowler, but all they did was make it hard for their own bowlers to bowl us out twice. West Indies won the following series in the Caribbean in 1985-86 5-0 as well. Gordon Greenwich finished the summer with 572 runs at 81.71. His tally included another double hundred, 200 and 23 in the four test at Old Trafford. If you like this video, please comment, share and subscribe. Thank you very much.